Okay, cool. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick. I feel like I have to explain this video first. This video is actually supposed to be an interview with Caesar Plea type of video. Unfortunately, I had to cut my trip short and fly back home to Manila earlier than expected. That is why we weren't able to film the interview back at CZP. So instead of doing the interview there, they sent me the interview questions and I guess I'll just interview myself. I hope you stay tuned, but I was still able to record some videos while I was there at CZP for one day, which I'll include some of the clips to this video. I think that's it. Let's get started with the interview. First question is, tell us more about yourself. So, my name is Nico Nam. I am a lettering artist and entrepreneur based here in Manila, Philippines. I give talks and I teach workshops both here in the Philippines and overseas. I created the Composition Ruler, which is a lettering tool that helps you sketch your layout guides easily and accurately. So, what else do people normally share when they're asked to tell more about themselves? What I'm going to do is I'm going to Google some random fact questions to answer because I don't know what else to share with you. So here we go. I think this is a good one. My favorite cuisine is blank, especially blank. So, my favorite cuisine is Japanese cuisine, especially sushi because mmm, uni, hotate, otoro, they're so good. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's too random. <laughs> Another random fact question that I could answer is, the hobby that I could never give up is blank. So, the hobby that I could never give up is handcrafting items that I normally use every day. So, I make my own journals, I make my own wallet, and I make my own pen case and other normal everyday stuff. So that is one hobby that I feel like I could never give up. For the last random fact, um, my favorite season is blank because blank. So my favorite season is spring because we don't have it here and I don't know. Um, and because I really like the temperature, it's not too hot, and spring feels like new beginnings. So those are my three random facts about me. Let's move on to the interview questions. How did you start lettering and how did you develop your style? So let me just answer the first part first. How did you start lettering? So I can't remember the year when I actually started lettering, but I remember drawing letters as a kid. So back in grade school, I would draw letters in balloon shape. So that is the clearest memory I have of doing lettering as a kid. And I remember writing my school notes in different handwriting. So I would say as early as a young kid, I've been um, dabbling with lettering. But I would say that I started taking lettering more seriously when I started doing freelance work for clients. Because at that time, I stumbled upon some beautiful, stunning typography work online and I decided, hey, why not learn how to do those and offer those services to my clients. So I think that's when I started taking lettering more seriously and that's when I started sharing my work on my Instagram account. So the second part of that question is how did you develop your style? I feel like my brush lettering style is a result of the time I spent in figuring out how to write each letter. I write my letters the way how I would like them to look like, not based on what others are doing. So I feel like that is how I develop my brush lettering style. Up until now, I still try to improve my brush lettering style. So I still figure out new ways on how I could write certain letters better and uh, if I could try new style for certain letters. So I feel like that is how I develop my brush lettering style. When it comes to my lettering composition, how did I develop my lettering composition style? If you notice from some of the works that are uh, behind me, I feel like it's hard to say how I was able to develop that style because, because if you were to describe my style, you would mention the lettering styles, the colors, the layout shapes, and the decorations that I normally use. But I would say 
I think I developed my style based on setting a standard for my work. First is balance is key, details are crucial, and always add decorations. So I make sure that my lettering looks balanced overall and it looks clean and it looks extra with all the decorations. So by setting a standard for myself and based on what looks right visually for me, that is how I develop my lettering composition style. And for my decoration style, if you're familiar with my work, you'll notice that I use a lot of leaf illustrations. Like this one, this one, this one, this one. This one, this one, uh, every single one of them. <laughs> so I use a lot of leaf illustrations to decorate my work. The way I do my leaf illustration, it is something I develop because I can't sketch real leaves. <laughs> so I really like my lettering composition decorated with leaf illustrations. But since I can't sketch real or actual leaves, I experimented and found a way on how to sketch something that resembles a leaf to add to my lettering composition. Next question, where do you get your inspiration from? So one of the reasons why I pursue lettering is because I am able to share encouraging truth through it. So I'm most inspired to create whenever I read or hear something encouraging that I feel like I could share to encourage others. So most often I get my inspirations from reading the Bible and listening to worship songs. Next question, what are some of your favorite products? This is an easy question for me. My number one favorite pen is Tombow's brush pen, the Fudenosuke hard tip. I have been using this pen for years, and this is the pen that I carry around with me wherever I go, along with my pocket notebook, so that I could practice anywhere. And the size of that pen is just perfect to fit into my jeans. Another favorite product of mine is quite obvious. It's not because I created it, but I really, really found it very useful and essential whenever I do my lettering composition, which is a composition ruler, specifically the five inch one. To simplify why I love this product is because it gives me the confidence to create stunning, well-balanced lettering compositions. Before the composition ruler, I am very intimidated to create lettering compositions. That is why I stick to brush lettering. I just can't build my lettering composition without spending too much time on it. And I can never draw guides accurately to save my life, so what's the point, right? With a composition ruler, creating lettering layouts has never been easier and enjoyable. Next question, how did you develop the composition ruler? There is this famous quote, necessity is the mother of invention. I had a problem that I needed a solution, so I engineered a lettering tool that solved that problem. I mentioned in my previous answer the things that hinder me from creating lettering compositions before. First is it takes so much time to sketch out your guides by using a ruler and some random object that you want to draw the shape of. Second, it is nearly impossible to cleanly and accurately sketch out your guides. Whenever I sketch my guides, most of the time it is very heavy on one side or it is not vertically aligned, so what's the use, right? And with my background in engineering, fun fact, I did not take up any art courses. I was determined to create a lettering tool, not just to help me, but to help others as well, to overcome the challenges in creating lettering layouts. Now, sketching your layout guides and shapes have never been easier. Next question. How much time do you spend practicing your art a day or a week? This is a question I don't want to be asked right now because I don't spend that much time practicing as I do before. When I started brush lettering, I would spend from 50 minutes to 30 minutes to even a few hours a night practicing one letter, just one letter. But now I don't have a fixed time to practice. That is why I carry around with me my brush pen and my pocket notebook so that I could practice anywhere I go. In church, at restaurants, or when I'm standing in line and I don't have data to scroll through Instagram. <laughs> but there are still some days when I will just pick up my pen and practice for a few hours, which I find very relaxing to do and a good use for my time. Next question. Can you share some tips or tricks to get better at calligraphy and art? Have you heard of the saying, work hard and work smart? It's the same with calligraphy. Practice hard and practice smart. You cannot skip the hours you have to put in to develop full control of your tool, either your brush pen or your pointed pen. 
but you should also be smart when you're practicing. You have to be intentional in finding ways on how to improve your work so that you don't keep on repeating the same mistakes. And don't be afraid of making mistakes because I have made a lot of those and I learn so much more when I make a mistake. Next question, what is your favorite memory or experience related to your craft? Wow, I can't think of just one specific memory or experience, but being able to combine my passion for design, my passion for teaching, and my passion for traveling because of my craft, it is something I'm beyond grateful for. When I started experimenting with this craft, never in a million years did I think that one day I will be giving talks and teaching workshops here in the Philippines as well as overseas. Being able to experience this because of my craft just blows my mind. And what makes this experience even better is that I got to know a lot of amazing people along the way. Next question. You've been to Malaysia a few times now. What is your favorite food? I'm glad you asked me for my favorite food. You didn't ask me to list out all of the food I like because the list would just go on and on and on. <laughs> my favorite food so far has been the char kway teow. The texture and flavor of the noodles with the prawns. Mm. The whole dish is just cooked to perfection. As I was writing my answers for this question, I googled how to spell char kway teow which was a big mistake because images of char kway teow showed up and now I'm very very hungry and I can't stop thinking about char kway teow. <laughs> so let's go to the next question. Is there anything you particularly love about Malaysia? Aside from the obvious which is food, I really appreciate the warmth and hospitality of the people there. That is why I keep on going back. And for the last question, how do you balance commissions with personal creative work? This is quite tricky for me since my work and my personal projects, they are related to each other. And the risk of not being able to balance both could take away the delight in doing what I do, especially with my personal projects. That is why it's very important for me to spend time to work on personal projects. So I make sure not to fill up my entire schedule with just client work and business work so that I still have time to express my creativity through my personal projects. So that is the end of the interview questions. Before we end this video, let me just include a b-roll of my trip to Seasit Lee.
Eh, hey, open, open. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this interview video with Cizipli, even if I'm just interviewing myself. Is there something that you resonated with my story? Comment them down below. I'd like to hear and know more about what you think. Because the reason why I do interviews like this is because I was at your position at one point in my life and there are a lot of people who inspired me to continue pursuing this and to keep going. So I just wish that I will be able to do that for you as well. So don't forget to hit that like button and comment below what you think of this video. Do you like more of this type of video with me and with others as well? Just comment video ideas for me so that I know what you want me to do for my next videos and I will try to do those. Before we end, I would like to thank Cizipli once again for doing this interview with me. I'll just insert Joy's face with like a bubble asking a question somewhere here, I don't know. So if you're new to this channel, I will put my links in the description below. You can follow me on Instagram at Nick underscore the underscore. You can visit my website www.ruhai.com if you want to get the composition rulers, but you could get them as easily as well. And subscribe to my YouTube channel, this one, for more videos. I used to post every week, but now I'm going to post every week again. So make sure you subscribe so that you will miss out on my next videos. So I'll see you on my next video. And I will see you again in Malaysia for more workshops once everything is back to normal. So have a good day and I hope you stay healthy and safe. Bye.